Morning peeps, only me again, Sean from Happy Days Veg. Uh, it's Wednesday, the, is it the 24th? I'm not too sure. So you find me here in the lean-to of my shed, uh, which is a, a, a lovely big area where I can do all the dirty work and, you know, make as much mess as I like and I ain't got to worry about it. So, raised vegetable beds. Now, those of you who've been watching my channel or know me will know I don't actually plant anything directly into the ground. And there's a couple of reasons for that. The main reason is bending down, crouching over, leaning, yeah? I've got bad knees, bad shoulders, bad back. So the last thing I want to be doing is too much leaning over. So... And I'm not getting any younger, so in the years to come, yeah, I don't want to be digging holes, uh, bending over. There's going to be, you're still going to have to crouch down and bend over, but I want to try and minimise the amount I do it. That's one good reason. Another reason is, here, there's not one patch of land where you can just put your fork or your spade into the ground without hitting stones, yeah? It's the stoniest ground I've ever seen which makes it very hard for planting and all the rest of it. And the quality of the soil isn't that brilliant. Uh, nobody around there grows any crops. I'm in the middle of North Wales in a rural area. Nobody grows any crops. Everybody grazes animals on the land. Yeah, and there's, re there's a reason for that. It's virtually impossible to plough the land because there's that many glacial boulders underneath the ground. I saw one field last year where the chap tried to plough the field and the boulders he was getting out the ground were the size of wheelie bins. Yeah, so there's another reason. Now onto a more practical gardening reason. A raised bed gives you a defined area to concentrate on for cultivating your crops. It doesn't have to be vegetables, it can be other plants, but I'm only interested in vegetables. Uh, so if you've got a, a defined area, yeah, you can say, right, that's bed, call it what you like, that's bed number one, or that's my potato bed, or that's my tomato bed, or cabbage bed, whatever you want to call it. It gives you a defined area. And what I also like about rice beds is it keeps your growing area away from all the weeds. And not just all the weeds, the rabbits, yeah? Now, got to be careful because I've got the sheep around here are like Houdini. It doesn't matter how much you do the fencing, the sheep always get in. Uh, and once they smell your cabbages or once they smell any greenery, it's gone. Same as the rabbits. Now, it, you won't stop the rabbits jumping up onto your raised beds. I've got raised beds out there that are nearly three foot tall and the rabbits get on there. But, you know, you still got to protect it. But it just helps keep the weeds and it, some of the creepy crawlies away from your veg beds. Now, I've always had this debate on what is, how raised is a raised bed. Now, let me get some timber as a, as a for example. Right. Just so happens, I've got this off cut, <coughs> four foot wide, from there to there is four foot, and this was an eight foot sheet. This is what I built my shed of dreams out of, and, and various other things. Yeah, this is OSB, orientated stranded board, I think it's uh, called. Now, that is roughly the same width from there to there as a scaffolding board. And a lot of people build the raised beds out of scaffolding boards. Yeah, perfect scaffolding boards, uh, inch and a half thick, uh, about nine inches wide. They come in various lengths. Uh, and they're easy to buy on, I say they're easy to buy, there's none for sale around here, I've tried. Uh, they're very, relatively easy to get hold of. You can buy them brand new without the bands on the end or whatever. So that there is what a lot of people build the raised beds out of, yeah? But when you put that on the floor, it's still a long way to bend down, yeah? It's not very high for the mice and the rats to climb up. Yeah, or the rabbits. But the main thing is, it's still a long way to bend down when you've got a bad back. 
So you'll know that I've got three raised beds. If you look at me last but one video, I've been weeding my beds and they're quite tall. But a problem I've got is this. All my land is sloping, yeah? And it doesn't just slope on the... Let's show you again, yeah? If that's my land, in an ideal world, you'd have flat land, yeah? Or slightly, slightly sloping so the rain can run off, right? But my land has got major slopes, seriously. And it doesn't just slope evenly like that. It slopes from, from uh, the right-hand side of your screen you're looking at, this, this hand here, yeah, it slopes that way, yeah? But it also slopes that way. I think it's called a compound slope. I'm not too sure. So that makes it hard, yeah? So I want me raised beds to be square and level at the top. So, that means this. Let me do a little drawing. Right, I've got this old kitchen cupboard door that's lying around doing nothing and it's just begging to be uh, drawn on. Right, I'll do it in a Sharpie marker so it's a bit wider. So, There's the side of your bed, there's the top of your bed, and there's the other side of your bed, yeah? So let's say that's the, let's say that's your raised bed. Forget about how wide it is at the moment, forget about how wide it is, and forget about how long it is, we'll worry about that in a minute. If, if your land is flat, it's beautiful. So for this is, instance, what I'm showing you today, my raised beds are gonna be two foot, right? So from, from there, to there is going to be two foot, yep. So, if my bed is two foot, and I've got, on the first bed I've just done, I've got uh, about 10 inches four, to 10 inches difference. So, the ground doesn't do that, my ground does that. Yeah? So when you're standing here, yeah, that's me there, look, with a smiley face. When you're standing there, your raised bed is two foot off the ground. But when you're standing there, yeah, your raised bed is one and a half foot off the ground. That's the problem I've got. Everywhere, some places it's worse, some places it's not so bad. So, you've got to have a compromise. If money was no object, it wouldn't be a problem. So, not only does it work for that way, when your land doesn't, when your land slopes that way, and it also slopes that way, you can end up that this corner is two foot, that corner's a foot and a half, the other corner will be a foot, and the other corner, I don't know, might be a foot and a half, uh, itself it all depends on the on the, the shape of the slope so it's very very hard and I have the same problem with my polytunnel so as I say in an ideal world your ground would be relatively flat and we wouldn't be having this conversation but my ground is sloping right so I have to decide what size the bed's gonna be get the materials make the bed and then mark it out and have to dig down all the way around, yeah? This will just be dug down a couple of inches just to stop it moving. Well, it's, it's not going to move anyhow. And then I dig it round, get it flat, put the bed in, until the and then put your spirit level on the top of there. And then when the uh, spirit level says it's level, that way and that way, job done. You can backfill it, job done. It's a pain in the bum. But that's what I'm up against, yeah? That, and that is one reason why I can't have a very small lip on the raised bed, yeah? Because I don't class them as raised beds. I, I class them as framed beds. All you're doing is you're framing the area, yeah? Four inches, six inches, eight inches, I don't class it as a raised bed, yeah? Whether I'm right or whether I'm wrong is another argument. But for me, a raised bed it's got to be raised off the floor, you know, ideally, yeah? In an ideal world, I'd like them all two and a half foot tall, dead flat. 
but I'm not going to get that with the sloping land. So, also, also, these new beds are being made out of this material. Yep. Yeah. Powder coated roofing sheets. Now you can, can you see, can you see the wall behind me? Yeah, that is the inside of that, look. Yeah, can't see because of the light, yeah? That's the inside of that, right? These pieces of sheet come and they're just over three foot long, three foot three, which is a meter. But you've got to allow for an overlap, yeah? Sorry about that, I got all the offcuts down there. So it's cor corrugated boxed roofs. This is box roof section, yeah? And that is the way it goes. You have your colour on the outside, and then on the inside, it's various colours of grey and all the rest of it, right? And then it overlaps to give you the watertight seal. But what I want to do is get six of these and fold them over. Yeah, fold them over to make a round uh, raised vegetable bed. Now you've seen the one and I'll show you, I said I'll show you how I made it and the reasons why I'm making it. So one of the reasons you can control the height, yeah. These sheets come in more or less any, any, any length, you know. The longest these people make a length is 20 foot, but I can't trans transport 20 foot. The longest ones I can transport are 14 foot, believe it or not, in my van, uh, but they weigh a ton. So I, I needed, I used all 10 foot sections. And I had some off cuts, which I made the first bed out of, and now I've got three, three sheets left of this green, uh, green uh, coloured, dark green coloured roofing section. So, 10 foot long means I can get five out of one sheet. But, and I've got three sheets, right? So, I'm just tempted now. I'm just tempted now to make the height of my bed slightly higher to make it even more raised on that side there, yeah? So if I was to make them, uh, if I was to make them say, it doesn't sound a lot, if I was to make it two and a half foot, it'd get, give me an extra six inches there. But obviously the bigger your bed, the more material you need to fill it, right? And this bed, is round. Hey, that's not a bad circle considering, is it freehand? Right? So it's a round bed and I need uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I need six sections, yeah, to make a bed. Now I don't, I, I just overlap it gently. Uh, I overlap it uh, by one or two sections so you can reach into the middle, yeah? And what I do is I drill a, a hole in the ground and I, and, I, and I put in a post in the middle that goes two foot into the ground, yeah? And I'll tell you what that's for at a later date. We don't have to worry about that post yet. That's just another little project I'm working on. So these are round beds. So from there to there is gonna be roughly, uh, roughly, uh, if I can, if I can remember, 64. It's just slightly over five feet, yeah? So you can easily reach into the middle without kneeling down, yeah? Or without bending down too bad. Uh, so you can get everywhere to, to plant and weed, yeah? So, back to the drawing board, literal drawing board. So this is what I'm gonna build out of this today, yeah? now. Where I'm building them, as the land gradually goes down, it, it flattens out slightly. So I'm going to stick to two foot. And I'll tell you for why, because uh, 
it, it, the, the first one's two foot, yeah? They look all uniform, they've got a bit of OCD, so I like things to look nice, yeah? So, I've got to get this, so I've got this piece of material, yeah? Uh, two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, ten, yeah? So, I've measured two foot, and I've marked the lines across, and then I'll cut these, and then I'll get another one, and I'll cut that one, and then I'll get the last one, and then I'll cut the, uh, the, the other ones I need, yeah? I don't want to cut it all up into two foot pieces because I, I, I don't want to waste this material. Yeah. This isn't very expensive, right? But there's no point in me telling you how much I've paid for this because the chances are, you know, you can't get the same material, you, can't get, you want this colour, you can't get the colour. So look out there on eBay and all the rest of it and uh, see what's out there, right? But this is just box roof section, yeah? You can get it powder coated or plaster coated, yeah? So it's entirely up to you. Either way, it's, uh, I can't think how thick it is. I think it's, one and a half mil thick, I'm not too sure. Or a mil thick, I, I don't know. But it's sturdy, you know, sturdy stuff, yeah? Like this, it's wobbly. But when you put that in, 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 in the round, and you backfill it full of soil, it's rock solid. So, we've covered the reasons why I want it higher for bending down and all the rest of it. Also, it helps warm up the, the soil, yeah? So when the sun's out, it hits the side of the, the raised bed and it's heating the soil. Instead of just heating it from the top, it's heating it from the sides, yeah? Fantastic. So, you can see behind me, I've got a 10 foot sheet laid out there and you can just make out that I've cut, uh, some, uh, marked some lines every two foot. Now, how do you cut it? You cut it with one of these bad boys. This is a four inch angle grinder, yeah? Now you can tell, but if anybody buys any crap from the German supermarkets, you'll know that that is from, uh, I buy these from Lidl, cheapest chips, yeah? It takes one of those, because that's a, that's a cutting disc, yeah? See how thin it is, it's a cutting disc. If you get them thicker, it's a grinding disc, yeah? So this is like one and a half mil, let me tell you, it's uh, da 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 da. It's actually 1.2 millimetres, very thin for cutting. That's what you need for cutting, yeah? This is a four inch angle grinder. This is an expensive one because this is a, a proper contractor's one. This is 110 volts. This is not domestic use because I'm an ex-contractor. Am I an ex-contractor? No, I still am a contractor, just don't do it, yeah? This is 110 volts. You can get them uh, 240 volts and believe it or not, they do sell these now and again in those German supermarkets, cheap as chips, but be careful. This is a serious power tool. This will cut your fingers off. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, yeah? If I'm using this to cut sheet metal and I use it to cut the ends off nuts and bolts and threaded rod and old rusty nails and taking pallets apart and all that, if, if that's what you're doing with this, can you imagine what it's gonna do to your hands? So you gotta be very careful, because this, this will, A, make you cry, B, make you bleed, and C, give you a little trip to your local a and &E, and we don't want that, yeah? And also, it generates a lot of sparks, so the sparks coming off will burn your clothes, yeah? Uh, get in your eyes, wear some gloves, jobs are good. Now, I don't know whether you need to watch me do this, but I'm going to cut this first one on video. Whether I leave it in the video or not, time will tell because you don't make the videos too long because this video is already dragging on. So, I'll cut the first one and I'll show you what you're up against and, uh, and we'll take it from there. Even though I've got my glasses on, I'm just going to wear this old face mask, yeah, just to keep those health and safety uh, uh, officers. Okay, and I've got a fire extinguisher, by the way. I 
Oh, in the old days, I used to write the uh, method statements and risk assessments uh, for all the jobs that our boys did. So, you know, uh, make of that what you will. How long did that take? Probably took a minute. So now I've got a two foot section of my green uh, side of my raised bed. As I say, I need six of these per bed. And then what I do is I drill a hole, three holes, top, middle and bottom. And, uh, and then when you get out into the field, you just bolt it all together, tie it up, uh, with a, a six mil roofing nut and bolt. Uh, and that is how, why, where I'm making my new raised beds. Yeah. Now, that works fantastically for a raised bed. Yeah. It won't work. Just let me get this off cut again. If you don't like the idea of a raised bed, yeah? And there's, there's a, another reason why I've had raised beds. It's because it, it's a lot easier to drive around with your ride on lawnmower, yeah? If you wanted to buy some of this stuff and use it as an edging, just to edge a small raised bed, yeah? You could cut it, you could cut it to the, to the desired height. And what I'd do is I'd dig a little, I'd, I'd just dig a little channel that wide, you know, three inches wide, just to sink it into the ground. And then I'd get myself some wooden posts. Uh, you could actually use the 2B1 treated roofing laths. They're cheap as chips as well. And you could just stake it, put some stakes in, hammer it down level, and then just put one screw through. And that, would would edge would edge your uh, raised bed or your paths or or anything like that. Yeah, it's fantastic stuff. It's it's easy to cut. You watch, saw me cut it there, and I know every not everybody's got an angle grinder. Yeah. Hope you like that video. Uh, I know it's dragged on a bit, but I promise you, I'll show you how to do it. On that note, I'll see you guys later. Take care, and until then, happy days.